All right, guys, so um, we're on page 104, section 4.6 still. Um, we're going to start looking at Descartes' rule of signs. Um, Descartes was a mathematician. Here's a picture of him. He was actually a philosopher, but he was very interested in math as well. Um, he was alive in the late 1500s, early 1600s, and um, he did a lot with mathematics. And the, the specific thing that we're going to be looking at is his rule of signs that he came up with. He actually discovered this when he was working on polynomial functions. So what he noticed was that the number of positive real zeros in any function is equal to the number of changes in sign of the coefficients of f of x, or will always be less than this by an even number. Okay, That's kind of a lot to take in. But what that means is that if I look at this function down here, we can jot this down. Determine the possible numbers of positive real zeros, negative real zeros, and imaginary zeros. So the first part of his rule of sign says the number of positive real zeros is equal to the number of changes in sign of the coefficients. So look at this. This is a negative. Then we go to a positive. Then we go back, well, then we stay at a positive. How many times does the sign change? Once. So there will be one positive real zero. This also says that it could be less than this by an even number. So I could subtract two or subtract four. But it doesn't make sense to do so because I couldn't have negative one positive real zeros. That doesn't make sense. So the only possibility is that there is going to have to be one positive real zero. Now, the next part of this says the number of negative real zeros of the function is equal to the number of changes in signs of the coefficients of f of negative x. So now I have to take my function and wherever I see an x, I have to replace the x with a negative x. All right, so if I do this, look what happens. I'm going to have a negative x to the third, that's negative, times a negative, that becomes positive. Negative x squared is positive, times positive 5 is positive and plus 12. This is what I get for g of negative x. How many signs, how many times do those signs change? They don't, do they? So there are going to be zero negative real zeros. So what does that mean then? If I can only have one positive real zero, no negative real zeros, what are, how many solutions do I have to have? So what must be true of the rest of them? They must be too imaginary. And you can see how that would be helpful. Because when I put this all together, my possible rational roots are plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. But since I know there can only be one positive real zero, I don't even have to check any of the negatives. And as soon as I find one positive real zero, I know I'm finished. There aren't going to be any others. So you can see how this could be a time saver for us if we use his rule of signs. Let's try this one now. You guys look at it. x to the fifth plus 4x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, minus 3x squared, plus 8x minus 1. I want you to answer this. How many positive real zeros could there be? What do you think? What is it, Seth? Yes. It's positive, positive, that's not a change. There's one change, two changes, three changes. So there could be three positive real zeros, or what else could there be? 
it says or is less than this by an even number. So what else could it be? Three or one. So there's either gonna be three or one positive real zeros. It would have been nice if we could know that for sure, but we don't. What about negative real zeros? Well, to figure that out, I have to plug in a negative for x. Now watch how we can do this without really actually writing too much. What's a negative to the fifth going to be? Negative. What's a negative to the fourth times a positive? Positive, right? What's a negative cubed times a negative? Positive. What's a negative squared times a negative? Negative. What's a negative times a positive? And then I just have negative 1, so that's negative. So how many sign changes do I have? 2. So for the negative real zeros, I can have 2 or I could have 0. All right. So this gets a little bit confusing. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this chart. Positive real zeros. I'm just going to put positive RZ. Negative R, Z, imaginary, and these are not real. So I could have all these possibilities. I could have three positive real zeros. I could have two negative real zeros. How many imaginaries would there be in that case? None. I could have three positive real zeros and zero negative real zeros. And how many imaginaries? Two. I could also have one positive real zero, two negative real zeros. How many imaginaries? Mm, two, right? Because we have to have a total of five. Or I could have one of these, zero of these, and how many imaginaries? Four. So a question you might see on your test is, I might give you a function like this and say, is it possible to have five imaginary zeros? Can you see how if you did this, you would say no to that question? It's impossible to have five imaginary zeros. Why else is it impossible to have five imaginary zeros? Yeah. Exactly. All imaginary zeros must have conjugates as solutions. So it's impossible to have an odd number of those. So when you make up these possibilities, you should always see this column as being even. It's not the case for these or these, but this, these values should be even. All right, so how does this really help us with anything? Well, let's go over here um, to our page 105, and let's look at this now, problem number four. Or, I'm sorry, this is problem number two, three. It's your number two, my number three. That's so confusing. <laughs> this problem. All right, so the first thing if I'm going to find my zeros is I'm going to look at, can I factor this? Can I factor it? Mm, I cannot, can I? All right, so now what I'm going to look at are my possible zeros. Real zeros, actually. I should put PRZ. So I have to do my factors of 125, which would be plus or minus 1. What else? 5, 25, and 125. Is that it? I think so. Divided by 1. That's not going to change anything. Now I'm going to look at these sign changes. How many times does it change at the beginning? No? Twice. Twice. So I can have, for my positive real zeros, these are my possible rational roots, also known, they're also pos possible zeros. But my possible real zeros, the number I can have would be 2. What about negative real zeros? Let's check that out. If I put in a negative, that would be negative. That would be stay negative. Negative times negative is positive. Positive. So how many negative real zeros can I have? One. And then what about imaginary? 
in this case zero, but what else could it be? This could be what? Zero. This must be one, and this must be now two. So these are the only possibilities. Which is the smartest thing to check first based on this chart? What number is the best number to start checking? A negative, because I have to have one negative answer, right? But I don't necessarily have to have a positive real zero. So I might want to check negative one first. So negative one cubed is negative one. That's going to be minus three. That's going to be uh, plus 15. That's not going to get us there, is it? Okay, so let's try negative five now. I'm going to use synthetic on that. One, negative three, negative 15, 125. I'm going to bring this down. That's one, that's negative five, negative eight. That's 40, that's 25, that's negative 125. See how that saved us time by kind of knowing the state cards rule of signs? Otherwise, I might have gone through and checked positive one, positive five, positive 25, thinking that I'd have a, definitely a positive solution. All right, so I know that negative 5 is one of my zeros. Now I'm going to take what's left. This is x squared minus 8x plus 25 equals 0. See if I can factor. Are there numbers that multiply to be 25 and add to be 8? No, so what are we going to do? I'm going to complete the square. You can use a quadratic formula. Half of 8 is 16. I'm going to add that to both sides. You guys finish it and tell me what the other two zeros are. Anybody know it? What'd you get, Zach? Uh, Anybody else get the same thing? Good, because that's right. This goes down to x minus 4 squared. This is negative 9. Take the square root. That's x minus 4. That's plus or minus 3i. So it's 3i. Uh, positive or negative, and then the 4 would end up being positive. All right, very good. So this is something that you can use now to kind of narrow down your choices, but you don't have to write it on every problem. They're going to ask you more specific problems about um, how many possible positive real zeros are there and things like that by using Descartes' rule of signs. Okay, and then we're going to challenge ourselves with this last problem. I want you guys to see if you can get this all by yourself. You got one, two, three solutions given, but there's actually going to be more than that because of what? Conjugates. Because of conjugates, there are going to be more. Okay? And I would definitely use some product or else you're going to be multiplying for a long time. I'm going to be doing it up here, but try it on your own.
Uh oh, I have a mistake. What'd you guys get? First of all, how do I know that I have a mistake just by looking at my graph? I'm checking this. This is what I got. To have one zero. That's right. I'm only supposed to have one real zero of zero, and I'm getting some other ones here. Oh, actually, I take that back. These are, I have two imaginaries. So those two I should not see, but these two I should see. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do to check this. this is, we haven't really done this much yet, but I'm going to find this zero here by going to the left of it and to the right of it. Okay, so I got a zero of 0.8 or 0.586 basically. So I think that's going to be 2 minus radical 2. I think that's the same thing. Yay. All right, so that is right. Okay. So at first I was thinking they had given us four imaginary solutions, but these two are real solutions. These two are imaginary. Okay, let me go through that again. I just want to show you that one more time how I can check this one. So what should this one be the same as then? 2 plus radical 2. Do you guys know about what radical 2 is? 1.4. So what's 2 plus 1.4? 3.4. So that should be about at 3.4. So if I want to find that 0, I'm going to go to the left side of it once I see it. Oops, too far. has to be on the left side of it. I hit enter. I go to the right side of it, just barely. Enter, enter one more time. Yep, 3.1414. So that's how we know we're correct. Were you guys able to get through it? Did some of you get this? How many people got it? Oh, only three. Okay. Do you understand what we did here? How we found the sum of these and the product, the sum of these and the product, and then once we got those written out, then we had to foil the whole thing. Did you guys just give up? Was it just a I lot to write did. out? Or? I, I, I did it. I had it right, but I was just, I just you didn't complete. one thing. And then it kind of yeah. The, yeah, then it carries all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else, you kind of understand it now, what we're going to do with that? Okay. All right. Good job, guys. <laughs>